questions? Oh, uh, after that, those first two drives, they get the 10 points, 130 yards. They're moving the ball pretty good. Just after those first two drives, how impressive was uh, your defensive effort? Yeah, I thought the guys did a really good job settling down. Um, obviously, gave up some plays early that uh, we did not want to give up. Uh, some of those, I think I can help the guys with a little bit more, um, creating some more stimuli in practice, putting some more stress on guys. Uh, they did a nice job. They showed us a couple of movers and shifts early. A play that we had seen a bunch, but a move and shift. Um, so just getting everybody settled down, playing their keys, communicating pre-snap, urgency in the pre-snap. Then I thought the guys settled in and played a, played a really good rest of the half. Is it a philosophy or a mindset, you know, with the sack numbers you have, to maybe be more prone to giving up deep passes. I know you don't ever want to, but maybe philosophically, defensively, with who you blitz and whatnot, yeah, like you're going to give up more deep passes than most teams. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird if you look at the numbers, right? Like based on explosive passes, like we're, we're sitting pretty good as far as the numbers concerned. The problem with ours has been when they've been explosive, they've been really explosive, which is the part that we, we've got to get fixed. And some of those are some tackling issues and those kind of things. But to your point, you do void some zones um, every once in a while. You, get, you put some guys in some man-to-man -man coverage um, when, when they are you know, bringing some pressure like that. The one, you know, Alex Tubner had uh, the deep ball, like they had a better call right there than we did. Um, but with that being said, Tubes can make that play. Nine times out of ten, he, he does make that play. That was the one time he didn't. Um, but they had, a, they had a really good call on that uh, play. And, you know, you, you, will, you will give up some, some things and some zones that are not there. But we would like to decrease those explosive passes. Just, what would you guys are doing with the sacks in perspective? I mean, Dirk said, hey, our offense has been sacked six times and our defense has 30, you know, five or whatever it is. I mean, just you're already, I think last year you had 36 all of last season. You're already at 35. How do you, I mean, I know it's obviously the talent, the scheme, it all comes together. But I mean, how, how impressive has, is in this, this gaudy number of sacks? You know, how do you explain it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, I wish we had the ones that we missed as well. Um, but uh, it, it's credit to the kids, man. I love this group of kids. We have a long way to go. We've, we're far from seeing our best football on defense. Um, but I love this group of kids. They work really hard. Um, they take hard coaching. Um, they know I get upset sometimes even when I shouldn't. But they're, they're an unbelievable group of kids. They work hard at the techniques. Every, every position comes and gets some of that blitz work with us. Um, the pass rush fronts worked really hard on the pass rush technique. Um, and it is a mindset that we're going to be aggressive and we're going to go after people and we're not going to back down, um, especially with our offense being as explosive as they are. You know, If we can get some sacks and get them the ball back and get some better field position, that helps everybody. The numbers on this, but it seems like your non D line sat, you know, the, the number of sacks you're getting from non D linemen just seems extraordinarily high. Um, how, how do you obviously that's talent scheme, all that comes together, but how much that that part of all this where you're getting guys like you know, tubes and stuff got his first sack the other night, too? Yeah, I think you know, I've always believed you know, my job is to put them in the best position, create an environment where they can be successful, and then get out of their way. Um, so we've got a group of kids that they, they, they embrace that. They want to they wanna be part of it. Um, and then, like you guys mentioned at the beginning of the season, um, you know, there's a lot of tension on Ahmed. And now JV's picking up some attention in the D tackles. So um, with all the attention going on those guys, you know, we have a pretty good idea what the protection is going to be week to week based on what that team does and, and how they're going to protect um, some of our pass rushers that have the highlights. So there's room to get some other guys through some cracks, um, some weaknesses and protection. And I think we just take advantage of that. You mentioned Jaden. He's getting better, it seems, every week. Uh, just just that one-two combo with Ahmed, just how, how dangerous is that? Yeah, I mean, when you have two edge guys that are really going, um, you know, obviously it's it's much, much harder to defend than when you have one. So, you know, even though there was some flaws in what happened last week, I think Jaden Virgin Morgan has played his best football the last two weeks. Amaria McCoy played his best football last week. So guys are getting better and guys are practicing better. I think that's the main theme. Like the guys, that, and it, it pops up every week. The guys that practice really good seem to have the best games. And the guys that don't practice as well, whether they're injured or otherwise, they don't have as good a game. So Jaden Virgin Morgan, Amaria McCoy, they practiced really well last week. They played really well. What was the game plan on Ricky White? That was the worst game he's had in a month. Yeah, once again, um, 
you know, we, we dedicated a lot of hats to some run game because um, I thought they had an extremely good run game. Amarion McCoy did a really, really nice job when he was um, alone on him for a lot of the night. Um, and then we had some things in, in some passing downs that we were going to try to take him away, at least, at least disguise the look pre-snap so that the quarterback was going to look away from him. Um, so, I, But I think the kids just did a great job again, and I was, I was proud of the effort they put against him because I think he's a fantastic player. You, uh, you mentioned McCoy a couple of times. Just what can you say about him and the rest of the calling as just their improvements across these last seven games? Yeah, I think that that group has improved every single week. Um, another guy to mention, um, Devon Banks is playing his best football. He's played really well on special teams and on defense. Jeremiah Irby's growing every single week. He's played really good football. So proud of that group. Um, really thankful for Coach Warren. He's really done a nice job with that group the last few weeks. Year, you know, using Andrew as a pass rusher, and even this year for that matter too. But um, on that that pick he had, like, how how much of a little changeup was that for him to drop, and how how good of a play did he make on that ball? Yeah, really proud of Andrew for that um, because obviously he's a known pass rusher, right? And he gets to drop in that one, probably something that he's not fired up about. I'm sure he wants to go get the quarterback, and that was a technique um, that had been not executed properly by him earlier in the season and it cost us a little bit. He worked very hard to get that technique executed. He practiced really well last week as well, but he worked really hard to get that technique executed and it was a huge play in the football game. He was kind of a step ahead though. I mean, like the way that he broke on that ball and was reading eyes of what he was doing there though. But um, yeah, I, I mean, that, to, to get it at that moment too was just massive for the team it seemed like. Yeah, and Andrew, you guys have seen him play for a long time. He's a natural football player. He's got natural instincts. So when you combine that with the proper technique, just, just good things happen. And unfortunately on that one, I think Tubes got his 15th tackle of the game or else uh, we might add a, the first defensive touchdown. With, uh, with, with Shea, I don't know what his batting average is when you send him, but um, he, he, he seems to be getting home whenever he gets the ability, it seems like. Yeah, he's an explo he's an explosive player, and I think you know the uh, the combination of you know you're bringing some boundary pressure, you're bringing some field pressure, you're bringing some up the middle. Um, those quote unquote unknown rushers, they're all becoming a little known now, but those unknown rushers um, seem to have a way to get home. But he's he's slippery enough, and he's um, he can accelerate really quickly, so he's he's hard to pick up in protection. Like how many different guys that you kind of sent or whatever, and I mean like. I don't know, I'm going to guess that UNLV was pretty much guessing the whole night with who was coming from where. How, how much did you find yourself in a little bit of a groove in the, the buttons you were pushing at times? Um, once again, I think there's, there's probably like three times a game as a defensive play caller where like when you call a blitz, like it can get picked up, it can get home. When you call one into a boot from the field, right, that's, that's when like, okay, you called the right call. That's like three times a game. The rest of the time, there ain't no magic. The magic is in those kids. And they, they execute, they operate, they do what we ask them to do, and they believe that it's going to happen when we call those pressures. So it's, it's, it's about them. What kind of challenge is uh, Cooper, the running back? Yeah, I, mean, I think he's a really good running back. Um, you know, we've seen some good ones this year. Obviously, we see a really good one every day in practice. Um, but he's a really good running back. Hard to bring down. Um, good contact balance. Shifty. Uh, he's going to be a challenge. In terms of how physical Tubner plays, how heady he is out there, <clears throat> you just got like a fun story about what he's doing in game or his communication with you or anything that just shows the level that he is at. Um, I don't know about a fun story, but I, w I will tell you this, like when we, we, we tried a lot of green dots just to experiment as the new rules coming in. And when Alex has the, the green dot on, like sometimes it, it, as a matter of fact, I might information overload him, but I feel like I can experimenting through the year. I can give him a ton of information. Other guys, you can't. They just, they need what they need and they need to go play. Alex can digest all that information. He's unbelievable football player. He watches more film than a lot of coaches. So he's just, he's exactly what you want to coach. The physicalness, sometimes I wish he wouldn't be so physical. I see the time, I'm like, eh, please, please get up from that one. But it, it's fun to watch. And, and the way that you guys see him on Saturday is how he is on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Like, that's just how he is every day. 
to some players, like you just enjoy watching, right? How much you enjoy watching him play football? I love watching. I love watching him practice football. You know, I get to, I get to see a lot less than you guys do on game day because I'm watching sometimes where I think the ball's going to be or formational stuff, and I don't get to see everything. But I really like to watch him practice football. You, you, you brought up Jeremiah Irby real quick, and I mean just. It kind of got off to a rough start this season, so to see him like have some resiliency and, and start to fight back and you know find his footing here these last couple of games. Yeah, Jeremiah, he's just a guy that you know he got banged up a little bit in fall camp. He's fought his way back. He's rehabbed his butt off. He's great to be around. He's got a great attitude. He's got a smile on his face. He works hard, and he's just gotten better and better every single week. I think if he'd have been 100% healthy, you'd have seen a different Jeremiah Irby at the beginning of the year. Now he's back, and I think that he's only going to keep growing as we continue through the season. It's kind of a, a fun one here. Um, Boise State on offense is nine for their last nine on fourth down. As a defensive guy, what would that do to you? I mean, that's like the worst. Fortunately, we've been pretty good in, in short yardage um, this year. But defensively, like that's the down you don't want to be in. Like fourth and one, they got a great off. We have a great offensive line. We have Ashton Genty. The sneak's always available. You sell out for that thing, and, and Dirk's shown some ability to throw some, you know, movement passes. It, it, that's a nightmare. Um, so it would be very, very frustrating. Um, and that's a situation I do not want to be in a lot. All right, thank you. All right, guys. Thanks, Sarah.